Well, hello and welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent and in this video we're going to work a few practice problems on how to determine the names and the formulas of acids. Now if you haven't yet watched the accompanying lesson on this, I encourage you to watch that first. You may also want to go to GetChemistryHelp.com and download both the accompanying PDF worksheets, you can print that out and follow along, as well as the summary of nomenclature rules that I put together. And I'll link to all of that in the video description below. But for now, let's go ahead and jump in and practice naming. So HF aqueous. So remember, we determined the name of the acid based off the name of whatever this anion is that's partnered up with the hydrogen ion. So we have a hydrogen ion. That means the anion must be F minus. Well, a non-metal by itself, that's just going to be the element name changed to ide. So this we would call fluoride. Well, because the anion ends in ide, we're going to look down here, and that tells us that the acid name begins with hydro, and the ending is changed to ic acid. So fluoride becomes hydrofluoric acid. So you can see that the ide here told me to put hydro on the front and ic acid on the end. But the root, the fluor, stayed the same. So fluoride became hydrofluoric acid. How about number two? So HNO2. So the anion must be NO2 negative. And NO2 negative, we call that nitrite. Well, if the anion ends in ite, we look down here, and that tells us to change the ending to us acid. So nitrite means the acid name is nitrous acid. So nitrous acid. So again, ite tells us us acid. How about this one, number three? So we have three H pluses, which means our anion must be BO3 with a three minus, because the three positively charged hydrogens indicates the anion must be three negative. Well, this polyatomic is one of the ones you hopefully know by now. It's called borate ion. So this ends in eight, A-T-E. So what do we do if the anion ends in eight? Well, the acid ends in ic acid. So borate becomes boric acid. Let's try a couple more here. H-C-N. Well, hydrogen is the cation, so CN must be the anion, so CN negative. That's called cyanide ion. So if the anion ends in ide, what do we do? Well, we can look down here, and we see that we put hydro on the front and ic acid on the end. So it's going to become hydrocyanic acid. So again, the ide here told me to put hydro on the front and ic acid on the end. And our last one for naming, H2SO3. So we got two positively charged hydrogens. So the anion must be SO3, two negative. Again, two negative because of these two hydrogens. Well, this is called sulfite. It's got one less oxygen than sulfate, so it's called sulfite. Sulfite. Well, it tells us to put us on the end. Now, the only difference is whenever you have an anion that's based on sulfur or phosphorus, we don't just say sulfus acid. We do put the er back in sulfur and the or back in phosphorus. So whenever it's a sulfur or a phosphorus anion, the root isn't just sulf. We do put er back in there. So in this case, it's going to be sulfurous acid. So I did put the us acid on the end, but I did slightly modify the root to not just make it sulfus, but again I put the er back. Same thing for phosphorus. If this was, let's say, phosphite, I wouldn't say phosphus, I would say phosphorus. So I put that or back in phosphorus, just the way I put the er back in sulfur. These are the only two you really need to be concerned about. For every other anion, you keep the same base root and add on that prefix or suffix. It's just for sulfur or phosphorus-containing anions. Okay, well, let's try a few the other way. 
Here we're given the name and we want to determine the formula. So chlorous acid. So I see it's based off of us acid. So us acid tells me the anion must have been ite. So chlorous must have come from chlorite ion. Because again, us came from ite. Well, what is the chlorite ion? Well, we know from our lesson on polyatomics that ite tells me it's one less oxygen than chlorate. Chlorate is ClO3 negative, so chlorite must be ClO2 negative. So that's the base anion, but what would the acid be? Well, again, for an acid, the cation is always an H+. So how many H pluses would I need to combine to neutralize the chlorite? Well, just one because it's one negative. So the acid would be HClO2. How about phosphoric? So here we have ic acid. And again, you see the or that's put back in here, like I mentioned on question five. So ic acid comes from eight. Now notice it's not this ic acid that came from I. That would have been hydrophosphoric. This is just ic acid. There's no hydro over here on the front. So ic acid came from eight. So the anion must be phosphate. And again, that ore is not going to be in there. So what's phosphate? Well, phosphate is PO4 with a three negative charge. So how many H plus ions would I need to balance that out? Well, if it's three negative, I would need three of them. So the acid formula would be H3PO4. Okay, number eight, hydrobromic acid. So here I do see the hydro on the front and the ic acid on the end. So if it's hydroic acid, that means the anion must end in ide. So it must be bromide ion. Well, again, that ide suffix normally indicates that it's a non-metal by itself, or at least something without oxygen. So bromide must have come from bromine. And bromine has a one negative charge, so we need one hydrogen to balance that out. So we put HBr. Now, one more thing we need to do, whenever you have a binary acid, that just means two elements, like this one is, we do have to indicate that it's an aqueous solution for an acid. Notice these were not binary. So here we have three different elements. Here we have three different elements. This only has two elements. So it's only for those binary acids. We do need to indicate that it's dissolved in water to be an acid. If not, you could technically name it something like hydrogen bromide. And our last two, so carbonic acid, so ic acid, again, tells us that the anion ended in eight. So carbonic must have come from carbonate. So carbonate anion is CO3, two negative. So because it's two negative, we need two of those positively charged hydrogens to balance that out. So H2CO3. And our last one, periodic acid. It looks like periodic acid, but it's actually pronounced periodic acid, and I'll show you why in a second. So ic acid, again, we just saw that means it comes from eight. So periodic must have come from periodate. So this per tells me we gained one oxygen compared to just iodate itself. So iodate would be IO3 negative, so periodate must be IO4 negative. So the acid must be HIO4. Again, we only need one positively charged hydrogen to balance out the one negative on the anion. Well, hope you enjoyed that quick video. As always, come visit me at getchemistryhelp.com where you'll find even more free videos, resources, and lessons that make learning chemistry fast and easy. Thank you.